Hi, this is Josh Haftel, and we're going to be doing another video on the all-new Lightroom CC, this time going through some of the editing tools focused on the color and the light sections. So to start off with, we're going to take a photo that we want to edit. In this case, I'm going to take this photo here uh, with the blue truck, and I'm going to double-click on him to open it up into the detail view. And then I want to open up the edit stack. So I click over here on the right side, and you'll see that I open up the edits. And again, maybe I want to close out the film strip on the bottom so I can click and close the film strip. So now I'm just looking at only the photo. So the first thing that I usually do when I start working on some photos is I start working on the things that bother me the most. And in this case, this image is pretty dark and I want to make this image less dark. So we're going to work with some of the light tools and then we can use the color tools to be able to tweak and tone the color so that it looks best to our eye. So let's take a look on the right side. Now we've got the light section. Now in the light section, we've got a number of different tools that we can use to modify the look and feel of the image. So the first one is exposure, and this one's pretty obvious. You take it to the right, it makes things brighter. You take it to the left, it makes things darker. That's pretty easy. Uh, and we can start off by making things a little bit brighter. But one of the things you'll notice, especially if you're using the exposure slider in an image like this, where it's really difficult with contrast, as I brighten it up and, and maybe I wanted to make the gentleman's face a little bit brighter, well now I've made the truck's hood totally, totally white uh, or too bright indeed. So I might not want to use that brightness uh, all the way up to the right. The contrast slider, now this one's also a really, really useful tool. Um, a lot of times people think of contrast the way, same way you think of salt while you're cooking. Uh, it makes things more punchy, it makes it more exaggerated. It really like brings out the flavor of the image but it's easy to oversalt your image if you add too much contrast. So it's, it's really important to balance it because it's going to exaggerate the lights and the darks of the image. Now, the next couple of tools, the highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks, now this is where the real magic comes in with a tool like Lightroom CC. This gives you the opportunity to go in and start targeting certain areas of the image based off of their tonality to either lighten or darken them. So what I like to do is I like to take a look at the image again and say like, well, what is it that's too wrong? I thought, well, it's too dark. Well, obviously making it brighter with the exposure slider didn't work because some of the image then became too bright. So now I can use things like the highlights and shadows to target one part of the image or another. So for example, if I take the shadow slider, you can see as I drag that to the right, it starts making only the dark parts of the image brighter. So it's basically working just on the shadows. And this is a really, really great way of being able to open up just those parts of the image that are important. Now, of course, you can overdo it, dragging that all the way to the right. That doesn't look great either. It's really nice to have shadows in the image. It gives the image more depth and dimensionality to it. So we want to use this uh, to the right level. Um, and then the next one of this is the highlights. And one of the things about the highlights is it helps you recover detail that's lost. And this is one of those places where it's really, really great to shoot with a raw file format. And it doesn't matter which raw file format you're shooting, whether it's Nikon's NEF, Sony's uh, ARW, uh, Adobe's DNG, so on and so on. There's so many different file formats and Lightroom supports them all. And they support the ability to access all of the image information that's inside of the file and it's the way that the camera captured it at the time of shooting. So RAW files are really great, and one of those great things about RAW is the ability to recover detail. So without the RAW file, you might not be able to recover some of the highlight detail that becomes blown out in certain parts of the image. And so using the highlights and shadows combination is a great way of being able to bring back detail into the image. And one of the cool things about working with Lightroom CC is it's basically a fully non-destructive image editing pipeline, which means that I can change any of these sliders and modify them in any order that I want to. There's no right or wrong editing order for you to go through. So this means if I want to go in here and start playing around with, well, how does it look if I brighten it a little bit? Okay, I made it brighter, but now I need to tune the highlights a little bit. I can keep on going back and forth, back and forth until the image comes out the way that I want it to. So now that I've got the exposure, contrast, highlights, and shadows tuned into basically what I want it to be, I can use the, the whites and the blacks to really hone in on those highlights and details 
details and, and make sure that there are still some whites in the image and still some blacks in the image as well. And so one thing that I found is when you use the highlights and shadows to bring down the highlight or open up the shadows, it's really, really useful to then drag that black slider down just a little bit just to make the darker parts of the image or the darkest parts of the image a little bit deeper and to make the lightest parts of the image a little bit brighter because that gives a, a little bit more punch to the image. And if we take a look at what we've done, I'm gonna click down here and you can see before and after. So I've definitely, definitely gotten to a much better position. Now, of course, uh, the gentleman's face is still a little bit too dark and I'm not being able to use these different tools. So what I'll actually end up doing later on in a different video, will show you how to use the brush tool or the selective gradient tool to be able to bring lightness or darkness to just a specific area of the image, but we'll do that in a later video. What I wanna do next in this video though is go into the color section because once we've gotten the light section kind of tuned into what we want, we want to go in and start playing with the color because one of the things I loved so much about Cuba was all of the bright colors and we want to use some of these color tools to really fine tune and, and bring out and exaggerate some of those colors. So what we can do now is we can take this Vibrant Slider and the Vibrant Slider is this really, really awesome technology that was developed by Adobe to create a new version of saturation. It's a better, improved version of saturation. Now, some people ask, well, why do you have both vibrance and saturation? If vibrance is doing saturation, what about saturation? Well, there's a little bit of difference between the two of them. Vibrance is something that's going to be also increasing the intensity of colors, but it has a couple of protections built into it that will protect against certain kinds of exaggerations of saturation of color. But the saturation slider is really cool too because you can actually use it in conjunction with the vibrant slider. So you could, for example, increase vibrance and decrease saturation to get one effect. You could do the opposite, which creates a slightly different effect. You could actually increase both of them if you really want to crank the colors up quite a bit. So there's, there's a wide range of different things that you can do using these different tools. And so this is a, a good starting point for this image. I just, I brought up the saturation. I increased the vibrance a little bit. Again, let's take a look at this before and the after. Now, I'm using a keyboard shortcut. Uh, it's the backslash key. That's that key just beneath the delete key, right above the enter key uh, on your keyboard. Uh, of course, you could just use this button down here, the hide or show original, but I prefer the keyboard shortcut just because it makes it a lot easier. I'm a kind of lazy mouse person, so I like keyboard shortcuts quite a bit, and a lot of these keyboard shortcuts are exactly the same as they were inside of Lightroom Classic, so if you're familiar with that, or even inside of Adobe Camera Raw, very similar. But again, that's that before and that's that after. So let's take a look at another image to take a, an idea of some of the other tools that are available inside of these color sections. So I'm gonna go into this image right here. I'm gonna hit space to go in. Uh, and now I'm looking at this nice sunset photo. And so now I've got El Farro, if you remember from an earlier video, this is what they call it in, in Old Havana. That's uh, Farro means lighthouse in Spanish. And so I've got the Farro here and I got these beautiful colors. But one of the things that's really, really interesting about uh, shooting in RAW is the ability to change our white balance. And white balance is something that's really, really useful, especially in very difficult lighting scenarios. And those difficult lighting scenarios are, are basically sunrise, sunset, when you have mixed lights, which means that maybe you've got some part of an image that's lit by both a fluorescent light bulb as well as maybe a candle. They all have different white balances or color temperatures and makes color look weird and maybe people's skin start looking green. Or in this case with the sunrise, the colors don't look as beautiful or as magical as I remember them being. So what I can do is I can go back into the color section and I've got a couple different options inside of here and I can pick from these different color options. I can see what would happen if I selected cloudy. Ooh, it's kind of neat. It's a little bit pinky purpley. I, I like that. Uh, or shade, or I can pick tungsten or fluorescent. Now you may remember seeing these similar kinds of controls on the back of your camera and they're very similar in concept. We can select as shot, which is going to be selecting whatever uh, was shot by your camera. The auto will go in there and it will try and attempt to decide what's the best color uh, balance for this particular image. Um, but oftentimes with sunrise or sunset, it's really, really hard to find the exact right color. And you might want to go based off of what might not be exactly correct technically, but maybe what you felt when you saw that. So sometimes what I'll do is in cases where I've got these uh, clouds in here and I, I know all well, the clouds should have been a certain color, I might use this eyedropper tool over here. So by clicking on it, you'll see what happens is I can go in and I can pick a cloud uh, and now that, that's going to do is it's going to neutralize the colors. And if I look at this before 
and after it's actually worse now <laughs> to be honest i don't actually like this at all i actually liked it better with the whatever the color um, balance that was set by my camera but i didn't like what that one was either so i can go back in here and i can select as shot but now i can play with the temp and tint sliders now temp is going to be temperature from cool blue on the left to warm orange on the right and i can play around with that one and then the tint is from green on the left to magenta on the right and certainly you can overdo it pretty quickly but if I go in here and I start playing around with these colors, I can actually get something much closer to what I remember seeing because this was early, early, early sunrise. And, and I do remember that the colors were just this soft magenta and it was much more like this than I'm looking at right now. And I can use a balance of the vibrant sliders now and then also maybe the contrast to start to get that look and feel much more like I remember it when I was there and I can use the whites and the blacks and the shadows to really tune this in. And as you start to play with these different sliders, you start to see, oh, the highlight slider is really useful. Uh, but now, as I've added in the contrast, maybe I'm overdoing it a little bit with the, the vibrance and bring that in. And then I can say like, this is before and this is after. And that's a lot more like I remember seeing it. And now I might actually also go in and use the crop tool to change up the cropping a little bit and the composition. And that looks like a lot much better photo. So I can see again before and after, and that feels a lot more like what I remember seeing.